Welcome. I'm Judith Rose, Acting Cultural Counselor of the French Embassy in the US and Acting Director of Villa Albertine. Before honoring tonight's outstanding speakers, I'd like to take this opportunity to say a few words about Villa Albertine, which was founded in 2021. Villa Albertine is a French cultural institution which seeks to create a network for arts and ideas spanning France and the United States by offering tailor-made residencies across the US to creators, thinkers, and culture professionals from France and beyond. In just two years, we have welcomed more than 170 artists in residence from a range of disciplines, including cinema, music, literature, visual and performing arts, and of course, gastronomy. Additionally, we host regular cultural programming and publish a magazine entitled States, which focuses on the major transatlantic issues of our time. I am delighted to welcome you all tonight to Villa Albertine's headquarters in honor of acclaimed director Tran Anung and his Academy Award nominated film, The Taste of Things. The This is Hung's seventh feature film in what has already become a legendary <laughs> career. In 1993, Hung was awarded the Caméra d'Or at Cannes and the César du Meilleur Premier Film for The Scent of Green Papaya, which also received a nomination for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards. A few years later, his following film, Cyclo, won the prestigious Golden Lion at the Venice Mostra. Hung was only in his early 30s. And tonight, we gather to discuss the taste of things for which he was awarded Best Director at Cannes this year. As many of you may know, the taste of things has also been chosen to represent France at the 2024 Academy Awards. And indeed, it is difficult to imagine a more beautiful homage to French art de vivre. Beautifully shot by Trananung in the dreamy countryside of the Atlantic Loire Valley, it is a love letter to France's rich gastronomic tradition. The film benefits from a remarkable cast, including Juliette Binoche, Benoît Magimel, and chef Pierre Gagnère, who makes a short cameo and served as the film's gastronomic consultant. Thanks to Hung's careful storytelling and Chef Gagnère's expertise, audiences are transported into the artistry of late 19th century French cuisine, an era which continues to inspire chefs across the globe, from the choice of products to the value placed on impeccable and creative presentation of food. The Taste of Things premiered at the New York Film Festival last October, receiving outstanding reviews and will be released in the US on February 14th. I was lucky enough to attend the first screening and I can still hear the ooing and aying of the audience as they marveled at hot butter being poured over lamb rack. <laughs> Take my advice when booking your tickets for the Taste of Things, don't forget to also make a dinner reservation at a nice restaurant following the film. You'll be quite aware of your empty stomach afterwards. <laughs> Villa Albertine is proud to support the Taste of Things Academy Award nomination with events across the country in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Washington DC, and here in New York. Tonight, we'll have the pleasure of listening to a conversation between Trananung, three Michelin star chef Pierre Gagnère, and Laura Lindenfeld, Dean of the School of Communication and Journalism at Stony Brook University, and co-author of Feasting Our Eyes, Food, Films, and Cultural Identity in the United States, published by Columbia University Press. The discussion on cinema and gastronomy will be moderated by Rebecca Leffler, France correspondent for Screen International. I'd like to warmly thank them all for joining us.
I would also like to thank IFC, the film's distributor, especially Daniel Freiberg for our excellent collaboration. Our longtime partner Unifrance, particularly Adeline Monzier and Anne Takahashi, as well as our partners for this event, Atou France, dear Agnès, uh, the Atlantic Loire Valley region and Screen International. Thank you all for supporting French cinema and for offering such incredible visibility to this stunning masterpiece. I will now give the floor to Hélène Dubois from the Atlantic Loire Valley region. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I'm impressed to see so many people. Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, here with you tonight. And we are, as a region, as a destination, we're very honored to have uh, had the pleasure of uh, having 80% uh, of the movie, I would say, shot in a beautiful uh, region. So just a few words on where is Atlantic Loire Valley, because you may not know. Uh, we are uh, located in the western part of France, uh, just underneath the uh, Brittany region, and we are quite uh, close from Paris. We are one hour flight from uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport. You reach the International Airport of Nantes. And uh, we can also uh, be visiting uh, using the train from Paris Montparnasse. So our main cities, you may have heard of Le Mans, one hour by train, Angers, one hour and 30 minutes and two hours to reach Nantes. So maybe there are a few images on the destination that will give you uh, an idea of maybe why our destination inspires also movie directors and uh, chefs as well. Thank you. Okay, bonsoir, welcome. So just a show of hands, who's seen the film? Okay, so everyone else who has not seen the film? All right. Well, for those who haven't seen the film, let's, can we have a little uh, taste of a taste of things? <laughs> From a Sith on a way, a waste of time, no need to be. Given up as a seller, I want you to tell me. If you felt the same Or if it was just a dream I'd see us talking at night Waiting for the sun to rise Falling out of what we meant Rain changed for the stars the trailer.
pris une fois de temps à travailler ensemble. Je lui faisais une recette et elle faisait des merveilles sous le feu. Nous passons plus de temps ensemble que bien des époux. Euh... Je vous le demande encore, Eugénie. Marion. Mmh. Combien de fois encore allez-vous me poser cette question The film stars um, two up-and-coming actors, Juliette Pinoche and Benoît Magimel. I think they have a real future. Uh, what do you think? Um, so the film is actually based on a book, uh, Marcel Roof's book, uh, La Vie et la Passion de Dodin Buffon, um, The Passionate Epicure. So I guess, Hong, we'll start with you. Um, what's the origin story? Why this book? Why this story? Why a film about food? In fact, I, I, I was looking for a, a book or something, an idea, to make a movie about uh, food uh, for almost 20 years. And um, um, uh, at a certain moment, I wanted to make a, a movie about Jim Heysen um, because he's a, a, a big eater. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and then another book, uh, an American book, uh, written by Bill Before. Um, the title is Heat. It's a very good book uh, about about food, and uh, but uh, it, it didn't happen. So and and then one day I um, I, I read this book, and uh, there, there were some pages in there that were uh, really amazing about how people talk about about food, and uh, uh, th that was the the, bit, the beginning of of this uh, uh, project. Um, but uh, in the book. The, the story told in, in the book was not really interesting, um, so I I decided to to tell the story that come before the book because the book start with the death of uh, Eugenie. Spoiler yes. alert! <laughs> so I I prefer to yes. In the film, she doesn't die. In the film, she doesn't die. <laughs> You'll have to go and see it to find out. Um, and how did your culinary collaboration come about with Pierre? How did you get involved? Did you call him up? Did you find out about the project? How did it? Yes, I, I, uh, when I, I wrote the script, I worked with uh, a historian. Um, and, um, uh, and he's the one who suggests to me to, you know, to meet um, uh, Pierre. And um, when when we first meet, uh, it, it, it was in the winter time. It was a winter time, and uh, he has the pot au feu. Uh, and so I, I tasted it <laughs> in his uh, kitchen with Yenke. Uh, we we went in, in the kitchen and we stand there and we try everything, and uh, it was marvelous. And Pierre was uh, so kind that he accepted uh, to uh, you know to to work with me. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. It's a gift. Hello, I'm sorry, my English is, very, is so bad. I prefer to speak in French. Oui, okay. bon, yeah. I prefer because like that, I can, I, I can explain exactly what I want to say. Okay. No, c'est un, c'est un. Alors, in English, it's a gift. Why? Because, because, uh, for. If you, if I was, a, if I was a, a young chef. Impossible to 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 be to be uh, uh, to be uh, enough strong to, to to do this to, to do that because uh, the time in the movie is not like in a restaurant. 
in a restaurant is one, two, three, four, five, six, we sell. In the movies, uh, five, we stop, we go back, we go in the basement, after, voilà, et, uh, and we stop, we go back, voilà. Et we have the, we have the capacity to, 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 to be on time on this project with the technique, but also with our creativ creativity. And uh, for me, it's, uh, it's like, uh, I hope to continue to, to do my work, my, my work, because I love that. I think I have uh, many things to, to, to say to my, to my place. But the, sure, this movie, it's a kind of a, it's an espèce de, de moment posé par rapport à ma compétence. It's a moment posed in time um, based on my competencies. Um, and also, for those who don't know, Pierre actually has a role in the film. Um, and how is acting like cooking? Is it like cooking? Sorry. Comment est-ce que jouer dans le, uh, incarner uh, dans, dans le film? Est que, comment est-ce que c'est comme uh, cuisiner? Alors, être acteur et non, cuisiner? Bah, je, I'm not actor. No. <laughs> No, in fact, he, 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 lo he loved it so much that now he shared the same agent uh, with, uh, uh, with yeah. Binoche, with Juliette Binoche. It's, it's, yeah. it's a truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, somebody, uh, it's a producer, please give, you, uh, give, you, give, give me my, your phone, <laughs> because I won't work with you. Yeah, okay. I don't have a coiffeur. J'ai pas de. I don't know what hairstylist. J'ai pas de chauffeur. J'ai pas de voiture. J'ai pas. J'ai pas d'exigence particulière. I'm not really demanding at all. So. Pour l'instant. For now. Après les Oscars, after the Oscars, we'll 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 see. Um, but how did it work from a technical perspective? Were you on set each day? I know you worked with Michel Nav, who was there. How did that work? Um, it was simple to be there each day because. Uh, Et I'm a chef, but also I'm a producer, I'm the technician, enfin, when I have a business, hein, and it's impossible to, to be concentrated during a few weeks in uh, the project, but uh, my, my, my chef, he worked, this, this man worked for me 46 years. He, he's, uh, he, he's me. Yeah, he has the capacity, uh, he has the techniques, and uh, we, we, on parlait sur mon téléphone, voilà. Il n'aurait pas pu être là, impossible. We spoke on the phone, but he couldn't be there every single day. Je suis venu quelques fois, bien sûr, oui. I came a few days to the set, um, but... And how did it work with the recipes? Were they in the script? Were they from the book? Did you create the recipes? Where... What are the recipes you're watching? Euh, Hung a travaillé donc avec, le, avec euh, ce, ce, cet historien. Hung worked with a historian. L'historien a proposé des plats. The historian proposed dishes. Et ces plats, donc, Hung me les a proposés. So Hung came to me with the, these dishes. Et il y avait des choses, je lui dis non. Donc, and some things I said no. Amener des, amener des, sur un plateau de cinéma, des, des grenouilles vivantes, c'est impossible. For example, bringing live frogs to a film set, not, not a good idea. Voilà. Et d'autres choses assez, assez joyeuses. So. Donc, on a dit non. Et, et puis Hugh m'a fait confiance, voilà. Et après, ce qui a été important pour moi, je crois que pour Hugh aussi, c'était les. On a pendant trois, quatre matinées, j'ai cuisiné pour pour lui et son assistant. Ils ont tout filmé et j'ai tout donné, tout ce que je pensais, tout ce que je ressentais, voilà. So for a few days, I cooked. Every, he cooked everything, and then Hung and his assistant um, tasted it and filmed it, and so they could really follow follow it um, afterwards. Yes, I realize how, how Pierre works in his restaurant. In fact, he's, um, he's kind of, uh, he's an artist. I mean, he, he, he would uh, try something, uh, creating a, a new dish, and um, the, his team is uh, around him watching, and they are the people who will organize later how to do it, so that you can uh, you can get, uh, cook it in time for for for, for you know the, the the people in the in the restaurant because he, he just you know following his uh, 
uh, inspiration or, or his thinking and he try different things. And uh, for, it is for the, the other people, he team to reorganize everything, to make it a dish, you know. <laughs> so it's very interesting. So I, I, I was able to film on this and it was interesting also to show it to um, uh, Juliette and Benoit uh, because they, they can see in fact that uh, they, they don't need to be uh, to have these uh, very um, how you call it virtuos uh, you know all the virtuosity the, yes the, the virtuosity they don't need it uh, because he, he, he doesn't care about this it, you know he cut uh, roughly things and at the end it's very beautiful uh, so that moi je ne suis pas un virtuose j'ai de, de l'énergie et de la passion Exactly. I just have energy and, and passion. And Laura, can you speak to this? We spoke about this earlier, that it's, it's a lot about the way of cooking and the instinctual cooking um, and how it's represented on screen. Do you want to speak to that? So I've studied a lot of food movies. I, I think this is extraordinarily beautiful, this film, and it, it just strikes me as very character-driven. Um, and you fall in love with these characters, uh, and they're their experience through the food is really, I believe, a you know, and you should tell me you're the you're the one who created this marvelous film is 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 about the process of relationships and how food becomes so much entwined with our identity. It's not just some product we create and then consume. It really is the embodiment throughout. You know, I think about the scenes in the in the garden where the food comes from and having this connection to the earth. Um, And then the funny parasols. I want to know if that actually works for those who haven't seen the film. Maybe you can talk about yes, this. Yes, it's real. It works? Fact, yes, it's, uh, we, we have to rediscover things now because all this uh, existed, you know, for centuries. Uh, it, it's, a, that, it's I don't know, it's a copper in, in copper and, and zinc. Uh, and it creates, um, yes, um, um, electricity uh, under, uh, underground. So it, um, it, it, um, the, um, the, the vegetables are more uh, st strong, uh, so the, the, the harvest is better, you know, and this exists for a very long time and we forgot it. Uh, now we use uh, uh, f fertilizer, things like that, chemicals. So it, it's uh, also for me a, a way to, um, you know, to show people that we can rediscover all this to make everything more natural. Yes, it's, it's a real return to simplicity in, in so many ways. Um, I guess we've been talking a lot about the way you've filmed the food. Can we maybe see the first clip and we can watch it in action? Do you know this sauce? No. Do you know what's in there? Du plat de côte, du lard fumé, des poivrons rouges, des champignons, du fenouil, de la tomate, de l'orange, Du vin. Oui, du vin conflant, bravo. Du persil, thym, laurier. Du cumin. Du genièvre. Des clous de girofle. Continue. C'est tout, je crois. Il y a aussi du paprika, du cognac. Et pour atténuer l'acidité du vin, on ajoute de la gelée de groserie. Et ben voilà. Tu sais faire la sauce bourguignotte. Bravo. Really, all these ingredients that she's mentioning are, they're not just ingredients, they're actually stars of the film. Um, so how, how 
did you choose to film this so that we could really experience all of the five senses? You know, we normally are, I think everyone can agree you're watching this and you're tasting it, you're, you're seeing it, you can touch it almost. Um, whereas normally when we're watching a film, we're just, we have sight and sound. Um, so can you speak to how you worked with filming yes. this? I had this idea, very simple, that if uh, um, you can make, uh, you can show things uh, uh, precise enough and uh, uh, vivid enough, then uh, what is missing, uh, the, the audience will create it, you know, like smell and, and taste, because uh, we all have uh, memories of it. Uh, um, so I, I, I was, uh, you know, uh, I bet on, on this. Uh, so the, 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 the idea is how to, to make it really interesting and vivid, visually. Yeah, Laura, I mean, I know you've seen a lot of films where food and emotions are intertwined. Um, do you, how, how do they tell the story in this film? One thing that's really interesting my colleague Fabio Parasecoli and I, who co-wrote this book, we, we believe there's a genre called the food film. And one of the characteristics of the food film is that food itself becomes a character. Um, and you have no non-diegetic sound in this movie, which I think is, it's, you only hear what is happening. Even the cut to the, you hear the sizzling and then back to her, you're getting her perspective. It's brilliant. Um, but the food becomes a character. Often in other food movies, it has its own sound <laughs> that travels with it, that characterizes it, and food itself drives the narrative forward. Um, and it becomes entwined with all of these emotions and human connections. And I see that in this film in a very circuitous way, um, where the characters are more deeply embedded with each other and the food than I, I can, cannot think of another movie that does quite this. It's very immersive. And I kept thinking of the word synesthesia. Was your mouth watering? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very evocative. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's something also that makes, you know, it's representing France at the Oscars. And I don't know, I've, I, it's the most French film I've ever seen. I think maybe everyone can agree here. Um, and that's something that's really tied to French culture, which is, you know, emotions and food are very intertwined. Um, so when you're, when you're creating the recipes, is that something that you're thinking about? Um, also, this takes place in the 19th century. So did you have to change the recipes to adapt to that time? Or if you were going to make a pot au feu or a vol au vent today, would it have been the same? C'est tout le, ce que je dis tout à l'heure. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y a pas de recette. There's no recipe. C'est juste une femme et ce que je suis... Bah, inspiré avec quelque chose qui vous dépasse. Donc, euh, c'est là que la cuisine devient, effectivement, c'est un artisanat, mais peut être un art. Il y a un moment, et ce qu'a ce qu dit où, tout à l'heure, on a eu une interview, il arrivait le matin, il savait pas comment il allait faire, il allait faire cette scène. Cook, ben, yeah, cooking is a real art, and, you know, Hung would come in the morning, and he didn't know how he would film a specific scene. It was just based on instinct. It's like Juliette Pinoche is just a woman in the kitchen cooking, following her instincts. Alors après les choses, elles, 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 après on les, on, les, on les cadre effectivement, et c'était le, c'était la, la relation que j'avais avec ce cuisinier qui restait avec moi longtemps. C'était, il a cadré pendant plein d'années effectivement mes, mes, mes idées, mes, mes délires quelque part. He really um, filmed the all of my creativity my my imagination and he put it onto the screen um for for years yeah la difficulté du méthode métier c'est que et aussi l'avantage ce film il est fait comme une vendange ça y est the, the film is made like you know the the vendange like where the the wine season um it, and et, et nous, on doit tous les jours on peut recommencer. And every day we can on efface, on start again, we erase it, and we start it ouais. again. Alors parfois c'est très bon. Sometimes it's good, and... Parfois c'est... Sometimes it's... Were there, any, were there any times where you cook something? Because everyone 
contrary to many, you know, cooking shows where it's just props and even in films, most of the time it's the actresses eating something, spitting it out. This is everyone was really eating everything, right? Yes, yes, uh, of course, yes. I, I wanted everything to be uh, real, so they they um, they they ate a lot, you know, during the scenes, yeah. because uh, when I say cut, they they keep on eating. <laughs> yes. So the all, all the the you know the, the assistants they 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 stand next to them and said I need the dish you know we need to reset everything for the next uh, um, um, yes for the next shot so please but he said wait 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 and then they finish it <laughs> then for the second take they finish everything <laughs> and then you you have uh, you you have the lunch time they go to eat lunch and then they come back and they you know they they eat again. So um, Yen Ke, who, who, who is um, uh, uh, taking care of uh, the, the art direction, and also um, she's uh, create the, the, the costume. Um, during the, the, the shooting, she, she told me that uh, uh, I better, you know, finish the movie quickly because now she doesn't have any more, you know, room to enlarge the, you know, the all the the the, the, the outfits. And so at the end, uh, she came to me and she said, "Hung." For this scene, you play it unbuttoned because it's impossible to to button, you know. Yes. <laughs> See your recipes that they're that yes, yes. That, that good. <laughs> Have there been more requests in restaurants now for uh, pot au feu and volovan and all the traditional recipes? Yes, of course. Today, uh, for instance, the, the, the pot au feu, it's a, it's a very um, um, uh, how you call it, common uh, uh, dish. Um, uh, uh, quite uh, quite poor, and uh, uh, but all the chef now they propose their vision of uh, of uh, uh, pot au feu. In now winter. trending yeah. pot au feu. Yes, the, exactly. the title of, of now it's the taste of things. When it was in Cannes, it was pot au feu when it first yes, premiered. Um, and I know that the French title it's based on the book. It's uh, La Passion de Dodin Buffon. Um, can you talk about the, the title? And uh, I think you mentioned that it, you didn't have a title for this film. And, and yes, yes, exactly. It is uh, the, f the first time in, in my life I couldn't find a good uh, title for, for the movie. Um, so uh, we, 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 we kept this title be because of Dodin Buffon. It sounds very French uh, for, for the French people. So we, we, we kept it, but I, I was not, uh, you know, uh, happy with with this, but I couldn't find something. So, um, for for the um, uh, for other countries, they you know they they adapt, they find other title, and yes, I was happy with it with this idea that in each country uh, it was adapted to the you know to the sensibility of the country. Um, and I know, Laura, you've written about this how how a film talking about the food of a country can speak to the culture. Um, so what does this film say about French culture, French cuisine, the time that it, you know, the 19th century? Um, what does it speak to you? Not being an expert on France and French culture, I don't want to overstep. Um, so I will hand this to you in a moment, but I do think when we think about narratives about food, um, they, they help to produce how we see ourselves as representatives of a nation. And also how we see ourselves influences how we represent food. So I guess my fundamental association with France is phenomenal food and wine. And I wonder, were they drinking as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. sometimes. Uh, yeah. How did that go? <laughs> yes, yeah, so they, they, they start with, uh, you know, uh, uh, a fake wine. Uh, and, and it's still sweet, so at a certain moment, uh, Benoit would ask for the, the, the wine. And then, uh, I mean, the production, uh, they, they freak out because they, you know, they, they were afraid that, you know, they, they got, uh, so, but so, no, we, we know our stuff. Don't, don't worry. We, we drink just, you know, enough to, to be in the right mood. So they, they had, uh, yes, yes, the wine, <laughs> the real wine for the, for the shooting. Yeah. So it's a fully French film in yes. that regard. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that uh, uh, usually a, a movie about food, uh, we always start very well with the food, but then slowly the, the drama of the, the story 
uh, we, will take over, uh, and then uh, we 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 will uh, lose it some somehow uh, d during the the, the movie. Uh, so for this movie, uh, I, I try to find the balance between the love story and uh, the food, and so th that's why we have this uh, uh, central part where Dodin cook for 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 Eugenie. So at that uh, at that moment, we we can feel that the love story and um, the the food story is uh, intertwined uh, at that moment, you know, in a, in a, a very harmonious way. It's a good time to go see our second clip, if we can, a little more about the Histoire d'Amour. Un poète chinois du XIe siècle a obéi à une règle toute sa vie. Il travaille une année entière et l'année d'après, la consacre entièrement à sa femme. J'aurais dû suivre son exemple. Dans ce que vous venez de dire, il y a plusieurs mots qui ne vont pas. Par exemple, vous n'êtes ni poète, ni chinois. Je ne suis pas poète. <rire> le Napoléon de la gastronomie, le prince, le roi, <rire> et tant d'autres qualificatifs, mais pas poète. Disons que pas encore. Mm. Yes, and and just before the the this um, scene, the line before that was for me. Uh, the, the, the sexiest line in, in the movie, when he asked her if he can look at her uh, while she, she's eating. You know, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it, it, uh, it's about sensuality, uh, because food and sex is the two source of uh, sensuality in our life. And uh, so when he asked her, like, the, this line, it's, it's uh, because when, when somehow, uh, when you talk to someone and uh, and suddenly you realize that you are not w looking at uh, at the eyes but you are looking at the the mouth the lips and and it becomes something quite sensual in there and uh, watching someone eating is watching the mouth the the lips so it's it's very it's uh, somehow it's really uh, it has this uh, uh, very uh, sensual quality and what do you see as their relationship? Because it is, I guess that's also very French about the film, is it's very subtle. Um, so how do you see their relationship? You mentioned the original story wasn't so great. Uh, so what was the love story that you wanted to tell? Um, uh, I think that uh, at my age, I, I wanted to make a, a love story, uh, but um, um, a ma marital love. Uh, because marital love, we we don't see it often in 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 cinema. Maybe it's uh, it, it's too boring or something, you know. Uh, so it was a challenge for me to uh, um, to do something interesting for the audience and to find the right quality of it and the, the right emotion uh, for it. So um, Eugenie and Dodin, they they they, they live and work. Uh, together for more than 20 years and uh, still uh, there is something very uh, uh, exciting be between them uh, and uh, um, I, I wanted to show how 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 was it possible in, in this story do you want to speak to the how how the food shows the the love I can't help but think about gender and performance of gender identity in this film. So maybe that that intersects, I think. Um, and your point about food and sexuality being so intertwined, one, one of the things I really appreciate about this film, I don't know if you've heard this concept of food porn. Has, have you heard of this? 
This film doesn't do that. It's not exploitative. No. <laughs> it doesn't push to this extreme. It's suggestive, and there's always a sense of love underneath the consumption of food and the production of it, and it's very much the partnership of the two. Thank I, you. Thank yeah, you. it's really different from mm -hmm. many other films mm -hmm. of, this, mm -hmm. of this genre. Um, I found myself thinking about the role of women, mm. um, and I've written quite a lot about this. And if you look at contemporary food films, most of them are placed in current times. Um, and they tend to put women back in the domestic sphere. So films like mostly Martha, Bella Mata, which is a German film, um, there's any number of them where the women start out cooking professionally and they wind up at home. This film dances around what is domestic and what is public. And I found that very intriguing. It makes me want to write about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, it takes place in you know the 19th century. And so Eugenie, in one sense, she's in the kitchen. She's fulfilling this role of cooking for a man, with a man. But she's also, you know, doesn't want to get married. She's, she's exerting her independence. So how do you see her role? Or Do you find her to be a feminist? Did you, was that a message you wanted to express? No, I, I don't think that she has this uh, political uh, idea. But uh, at the end of the movie, uh, say it really clearly. Mm. The, who, who, she, uh, who she is and, and, and why, why the story is like that. You know, and it's very precise and very clear. I cannot say because it, it's a spoiler. <laughs> Say, but it's very yeah. clear at the end. Yeah. Yes. Well, but that is what is amazing is we're watching this and there's a lot of we're watching mostly them moving around the kitchen and cooking and yet there's a story and at the end you know we we miss her and um, and the movements I guess Pierre for you the the movements in in the film is was it similar to the choreography of what happens in your kitchen or was it is it much less frenetic than in a en fait les, les mouvements. Uh, qu'on voit sur l'écran, est-ce que ça ressemble à ce qui se passe dans la vraie cuisine ou c'est... Ah, non. non, totalement. Il y a vraiment le... Non, il n'y a pas de, du tout de... Euh, y a, y a, y a... Moi, je suis très à l'aise avec ce que, ce que je vois. Il n'y a pas d'erreur, de, quoi. Il oui, n'y no a, 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 a pas d'erreur dans le sens où, les, où, où euh, ces, ces deux personnages prennent le temps de cuisiner et le, le cinéaste, le metteur en scène, il prend le temps de filmer. Et ça, c'est très, c'est très, c'est très intéressant. Ça. The two actors are really two people are taking the time to cook, to prepare the food, and the filmmaker is really taking the time to film everything. Um, I guess you can talk about that, maybe the long plan séquence and and how that really puts everything into perspective in the film. Pierre, oh, oui. yes. Pas, pas, oui. Puis il y a une chose... Euh, alors moi, je ne sais pas ce qu'en pense Hong euh, avec ce qu'on a vu là au départ, avec cette, euh, ces bruits de trompette un peu violents. Tout, le film, ce n'est pas ça. Le film, c'est du silence. C'est du silence. The movie is really silence. It's a lot of silence. Um, but silence that speaks volumes. So... Yes, yes. I think that um, it's the first time uh, I like using music in, in, in film. I like it very much. But uh, this time, no, no, no music in, in the movie because uh, of what you said before, all these uh, sound in the, in the kitchen and somehow uh, uh, the, this sound uh, push away the music. So I, uh, after, you know, um, um, the editing of the sound, for, for the film, I realized that uh, there was a quality, uh, there was a musical quality uh, in it. So I, I didn't need uh, uh, the music at all to to keep this feeling of reality uh, of something very real in 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 the movie. Uh, and uh, lorsqu'elle lorsqu tape, uh, on le voit là, le, là avec la, la cuir en bois. Ça, bon, ben, ça c'est un geste de cuisine. When she just taps the the, the spoon with the wood on the on the table a couple of times, that's that's reality of, of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So are you going to release the soundtrack of just the sounds of the kitchen? You can we can all it can be very calming and yeah. Um, do you all have any questions, les questions? In the, oh, oui. uh, I don't know how you lit this film. How did you light it? Did 
because oh, we, the two sequences, I've not seen the film, but the one with the candlelight. Yes. I mean, you have shot reverse shot, you have a lot of timing going on, and uh -huh. then even any of these other shots. Didn't that spoil the food? Did, how, did you, how did you maintain the food with all the lighting? Uh -huh. to yes, yes. It, this is something that is very important for, for, for Pierre. Pierre told me, listen, a dish, you need to be ready before you, you, you bring the dish to the, to the table to film it because you have one minute, no more. After one minute, the sauce doesn't look the same and it's not good anymore. Yeah, I can see it. So we, we, we had to be very careful uh, with this. And um, of course, we, uh, we, 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 we use a lot of light uh, to do that. Um, the, the scene that you see uh, on the second uh, clip, it's, um, um, it's in, the, in, in the room that is protected because uh, it's a monument. And um, the, the wall was in wood and painted. And you cannot touch the, the wall. You cannot, you know, do anything on it. So uh, we, we have to, to use a candlelight a lot uh, to, to, to have the, the, the scene lit, and, uh, um, and, and it, it has this uh, very soft quality uh, for the scene, and since it's a, a very important scene, because it's a scene where Dodin cooked for Eugenie, it has, uh, uh, um, in, in terms of light, a quality that the, the other scenes do, uh, doesn't have. Was it only candlelight, or was it other lighting? There, there are some, some other lighting, but very, very few, yes. It's Just to, to, um, to keep the background a little bit high, so, so it's not completely dark. So it's not very yeah. It's, yes, it's, yes, exactly. No, yes. it's a great question because when you see the film, you'll see that light, if food is a character in the film, the lighting too, because it passes through the seasons. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about using light as um, Yes, a the, the, the light in the movie, it was... Uh, um, there was a, a simple idea uh, from me, is that I, I would like the, the light uh, to um, reflect um, uh, Eugenie's emotion. Because in, in, the, in the movie, at, at one moment, she said that uh, she liked summer, and she liked the heat of the summer, and it's just like uh, the heat in the kitchen. Uh, so um, uh, for, for the whole movie, uh, I wanted to, to have this quality of uh, a warm color. And then when it's cold, uh, it's uh, about her, her, her sickness, uh, you know. So w when you see it immediately, you have the feeling that something is wrong. And it's wrong because uh, she's, uh, she's, not, she's not well, you know. Um, other uh, there? Hi. Uh, I know that the sort of idea of a return to ancestral knowledge, to traditional knowledge, is sort of a big trend nowadays, especially in food and all kind of more um, sustainable practices. I was wondering if that's a bit of a, a thesis of the film, uh, releasing a film like this today. Is it sort of also a further nudge to kind of point us towards uh, these, uh, this sort of more traditional knowledge? Is that one of the ideas sort of underpinning the movie? Uh, no, no. I, I've, I've, I mean, um, if I, I'm, uh, I chose this uh, period, end of 19th century, it's, um, uh, it's because um, it, Dodin said, said it in, in the movie. He said that only 13 years uh, uh, there, there is only 13 years between the death of um, uh, Antonin Carême and the birth of uh, Auguste Escoffier. And Auguste Escoffier is someone who will bring the, the cuisine to the mo modern time, you know. And, and then, for me, it was interesting to, to, to have it there uh, at that, that period because when Dodin cooked for Eugenie, since Eugenie, he, she's a, a very good cook, uh, he has to find something to, uh, to convince her, you know? And then what, he, he's, uh, what he's doing for her, in fact, is the premise of the modern cuisine, you know, the way he presented it. You know, it's, uh, it's quite different, 
you know, it's I only you know want to say this, and uh, I don't have uh, uh, at all the, the, the you know the the, the goal that you uh, you asked. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Oh, yeah. Choice of casting was Juliette Binoche and Benoit Magimel were they your first choices and or not or because the synergy was amazing. Uh -huh. So can you tell us about the casting process? Yes. Not only them, the others as well. Yes, uh, Juliette was there from the beginning because uh, we, we know each other before and we, we promised to make a, a movie together. So when um, I knew her for, for more than 20 years, but um, it's only now that I see that the character and um, Juliet at her, at her age was uh, perfect for, for the role. So uh, since we share the same um, uh, agent, she, she knew uh, what I was uh, doing. So she uh, she reminded me that uh, I, I, I made this promise. So she was there from the beginning. And, um, and Benoit was in my mind from the beginning also. But um, Juliet, because they had a story together uh, 20 years ago they they had a daughter and um, and uh, since they split they didn't make another movie together so for me it was a little bit um, I was afraid of it somehow you know I was anxious but I wanted to have him so but Juliette told me that she um, for sure he, he will not accept the you know <laughs> the part and um, uh, but then uh, I have to wait until, uh, you know, the last moment. And, um, and without telling her, I, I showed the, the, the script to, uh, to Benoit and he, he read it uh, overnight and the next day he told me that he would like to be uh, uh, in the movie. And then I, I told um, Juliette and she said, oh, it, it, it's going to be difficult. It, it will be complicated, you know. But finally, uh, when when we start shooting, um, I, I can see that you know uh, it was marvelous, and um, I, I wanted to, to to have a better relationship between uh, uh, Juliette and Benoit. So I wanted to have a, a lunch uh, once a week with them, and then the first time we had lunch, Benoit came very late. He, uh, he, he ate in 10 minutes and then he left. <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't, you know, organize a, a second lunch uh, <laughs> because of this. And um, the little girl was uh, amazing in, in the yes. She was only 11 when we shot wow. the, yes, the, the movie. And uh, um, when, when, we, I, when I cast, uh, um, the, the most important thing for me is how she chew, because th this is very important. Yes, it, it's uh, it need to be when you see her uh, chewing, you know, you uh, it need to be, you know, we we have to the, the feeling that is good, you know, and how she uh, analyze it, the the taste, everything, uh, that was uh, the most important thing. And uh, she has uh, these eyes, uh, amazing eyes that she has, so big, you know. And um, no, I was l always uh, lucky with uh, uh, children in, in my movies. <laughs> yeah, we can taste it with her. Um, one more question. Dessert question. Save the best for last. <laughs> okay, I guess, how do you want people to feel when they leave this film? I guess both of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More than hunger. Heureux. Happy. <laughs> well done. I think it succeeded. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Bon appétit.